Joining us now in Studio B to break down last night's BYU baseball win. 17-plus runs, 20-3 to advantage for BYU over San Francisco is the head coach, Mike Littlewood. Coach, welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, uh, in a word, how would you explain last night's game? Yeah, uh, it was crazy, but you know, I don't look at it the way you guys look at it. I look at it the first inning where they have guys on first and second and with no outs, and then they have guys on first and third with, with uh, one out, and we turn a double play, and then we come back and score – a few runs and, and take the lead that way. But to me, when it was 11-1 and they scored a couple runs, my stomach's still churning because they're a good team. They're a veteran team. And, and I can see what Coach Giratano was doing. Once we got up 11-3 or 11-2, he, he wasn't going to waste pitchers that could help them tonight or tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. And so he threw a position player in there that couldn't throw strikes. And it was weird. It was the, one of the few times that uh, we've been in that, you know, I've been in that situation in my career. We had a similar situation against Utah four years ago where we beat them 23 to one, three or whatever the score was, and they just couldn't get us out. We kept hitting numbers, and, they'd, and then they'd walk a guy, and they just couldn't get us out. And that's the way baseball is. Sometimes it just it goes that way. And so I, I felt bad for, for their staff and Coach Giratano, but I knew what they were doing. He was not going to throw a guy in there that uh, on the mound that was going to help them tonight or tomorrow night. Well, it, it, it is. We talk about the, the hit by pitch. In, in that inning alone, you had Danny Jelich getting hit twice in yeah. the same inning. It, it's just I, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't either. It, it's, I, throwing strikes is a lot like, and I say this a lot, like putting or free throw shooting or anything that it, or hitting. It's contagious. And all of a sudden, when you get the golf clap from the, from the home team for throwing a strike, <laughs> I mean, that just like you feel like you're just in a bottle and, oh, and you know, just in a in a small little fishbowl. And and now the pressure to throw another strike is, oh, my gosh. And then he threw a strike and then the next one's like in the dirt, almost hits a guy in the foot. I mean, that's what <laughs> athletics is all about, m being mentally tough and being being able to overcome those things. And those guys, a couple guys were just inexperienced on the mound and, and uh, the game was out of hand already. So Coach Giratano was just trying to get just get out of that any yes. possible way. And I was going. Please hit a hard line drive double play. That's what I, because <laughs> yeah. you want your guys to have a good at bat. Yeah. You don't want them to strike out, but just hit a like a laser to second base, and <laughs> we're gonna get caught off the bag and, and double them up. But I won't hope for that tonight because they're gonna become they'll they'll come ready to play tonight. Four hit batters, three walked in runs that inning, a wild pitch or two. Uh, I mean, there might have been more than that. But at one point, BYU had scored five runs and didn't have a hit. Yeah. Like I just well, it's it's so crazy because there's some games where you're you're losing one zero or you're up one zero, and if you're down one zero in the fifth or sixth, sometimes it just feels like it's a ten run deficit. Baseball's just weird that way, and and this year we've had a lot of games where we're down four or five, and it, it just doesn't even feel like we're losing. You know, you just come back and so it, it's just all about a feel. And but tonight will be a different story. They're gonna come yeah. out ready to play, no doubt. What'd you make of Jordan Woods' final home start? I liked it. I mean, it wasn't super clean, but he gutted it out. Um, especially, I think the first inning was big for him, yep. getting out, like, turning that double play. First, third, one out. Uh, the ball's hit back to him. He turns a 1-6-3 uh, double play. That was huge, and then we come back and answer. Um, didn't have great command of, of really anything, but he just gutted it out and found a way to found a way to go six innings for us. And it was just, it was great. Yeah, the first time he's gone that deep into a game in his last six starts, and it was nice that he had kind of the senior night feel for him in his last home start. Of course, there's a lot more baseball to be played with Jordan Wood. Yeah, but what is the status of your pitching staff overall? You're going to go with Easton Walker tonight, <clears throat> yeah. who has been lights out, and that's probably putting it lightly. Yeah, one eight ERA in league, one five ERA overall, six and zero. Oh. Um, he just, you know, the kid just doesn't give in. He'll bend, but he won't break. Um, he should be well rested because he he gave us four innings last week. I, I pulled him. In fact, last last week we didn't get great starting pitching. Jordan Wood went four innings, and Easton went four innings, and uh, Sterner went three innings. Um, and I probably pulled Sterner just a tad early because I was frustrated. We we went up, and then he walked a couple guys and gave up a home run, and I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> Got somebody <laughs> else in. Uh, but he'll he'll give us a great effort tomorrow tomorrow afternoon uh, when he starts. But Easton, he's just I you know he he's I wish everybody could look at his mentality, the way he approaches every every day at practice and every bullpen and every throwing session, um, and then it translates over to the game. And just he's mentally tough. You watch his face today if you watch the game on live or, or on TV, whatever you're going to watch it, however you're going to watch it, you will you won't know if he's if the game's tied, if he's down four runs, if he's up five runs, because, I mean, he's stone cold. <laughs> you know, he's, he just, he's just one of those guys. He's like Woody. He's a, he's a bulldog. One of, the, one of the most fun parts of this year is there's been so many different things that have been exciting and fun to watch. What's been the biggest surprise to you about this season? 
Oh, you know, there's been there's been a bunch, but I I mean, one thing really pops out to me, and that's um, probably Reed McLaughlin. Just he steps he he. I mean, there's been a lot of surprises. Noah Hill's really stepped up, and uh, Jackson Clough has has come in and just been. I mean, he's turned himself into a high prospect. I mean, there's scouts every day watching him. He won't be here next year, um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, because of the draft. But um, I think Reed's come in, and and our whole entire pitching staff with Coach Bradshaw. He's Reed's just done an incredible job. There's so many times he's come in as a freshman with bases loaded, no outs, and he's gotten us out of it or minimized the inning to one run. And that's one thing we talk about with our bullpen. We got to, and our pitching staff. We had we need to minimize innings. Don't let innings. We can give up one or two, but let's not give up four or five or six and let this thing run away from us. And they've done a great job. But um, Reed probably sticks out. Easton sticks out. I mean, that's why we're having such a great season. Is there's more than right. there's more than just one guy that comes to mind, and we could talk all day about all the surprises this year. Yeah, Ryan Sapedi is another one yeah. that comes to mind. Yeah. A guy that's uh, started now four games, and all he's done is hit multiple doubles yeah. and goes for a couple of RBIs last night. And I mean, he's he's a guy that didn't even travel with you to a few series. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's a kid who big, strong kid. He's been working with Coach Pratt with his swing. He he needed to get his bottom half, in, sim- in simplistic terms, uh, involved with his upper half with his swing, and he's just worked hard. And we came back ten days ago from from Washington, I think it was. Or may, might have been Pacific, because I don't think he even went to Pacific. And I looked at his swing, and, and uh, you and I talked about this yesterday, and it just looked fresh. And Because this time of year, guys get tired, and their swings look a little, they kind of look lethargic. And I'm like, wow, that, that swing looks really good. He's hitting the ball to right field and left field and hitting, just hitting lasers everywhere. And so I took him. Casey Jacobson's hurt. I take Casey off the, off the uh, 27-man active roster for the week, add Sapiti, d- decide to start him fr- Friday. And he just like hits a ball off the wall, and I mean goes, goes five for eleven or six for eleven on the road trip, and he just you know take advantage of the opportunity that's given to him. Carson Matthews has done the same thing. Started the first twenty games, sat the next twenty, came in and, and done a great job for us at second base. Last night during the game, it was after Sapiti crushed one that hit hit the 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 wall. Yeah. And I, I I happened to be looking at you. You look over to the dugout and you go, wow. Yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> That ball, I mean, it was just, it didn't get over 15 feet no. high, but it hit the center field wall. And just, and he just like crushed. threw his wrists at it. And, you know, he's a, he's a big, strong kid. You said, and you've said this multiple times, you think it's going to take 17 conference wins. You've got 16 heading into tonight's game, 17 conference wins to get you into the tournament, the conference tournament, and then maybe 19 to be able to get the regular season title. You still feeling good about those? Well, 19 will will give us a share no matter what. Right. Gonzaga Gonzaga and LMU uh, both buy from – Loyola buys this entire – they don't play because of finals. Gonzaga plays Lamar at home. But then they play each other at LMU the last week. So, you know, one of those teams is going to – if I were to project, and I have many, many times, I think LMU is probably going to win two out of three down there. Um, So – I don't know. We're just counting wins right now. You know, we have the tiebreaker over St. Mary's. We have the tiebreaker over Pepperdine. Um, if we win tonight or tomorrow, we have the tiebreaker over San Francisco. So those are all great things. Gonzaga has the tiebreaker over us. So all those things factored in. When it comes to tiebreakers, you never know because you think as a coach, you're like, man, we we have the tiebreaker over these guys. But then all of a sudden it's like, well, they beat this, these guys and these guys. So I just try to win as many games as we can. That's that's our goal. It seems pretty simple. Yeah, Mike just Littlewood, win the games. The BYU baseball head coach with us on BYU Sports Nation, and I know it's day to day, game to game, but you are in that. Uh, and for BYU in the West Coast Conference, it's unusual, but you're in the at-large conversation because you have played so well and you've won so many games, and your schedule has, has panned out nicely. So if you were to make a case to the people that matter and are putting together that tournament, what would the case for BYU as an at-large be? Well, I mean, we've been, we've been consistent all year long. We beat Oregon. We beat, went to Washington, beat them two out of three. I mean, um, we've done everything we possibly can. We've, we've won games. We scheduled tough. We, we, Lamar on the road. I mean, Corpus Christi on the road, Ohio State, Northwestern, uh, Oral Roberts. I mean, these teams are good teams that traditionally win 30 games a year. Um, but, you know, I feel like when I do that, I'm, I'm begging to somebody, and uh, I want to—I just want to earn it. So the way you earn it um, with the RPI is you have to win games. Uh, we're going to lose RPI points next week because we play Utah, 
they're a good program. I'm not saying anything negative about their program, but they, they don't have a good record. And so no matter what, if we go down to Utah and win, we lose RPI points. That's just the way the RPI is set up. Then we go to Santa Clara, and if we sweep Santa Clara, we're, we're, we're going to lose RPI points. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so um, we're not going to lose many if we win. But if we lose at Santa Clara, it, it like explodes on us. And so every single game, if we're, if we're in the mid-30s, we make it to the championship game of the West Coast Conference Tournament, I think that's where we're pretty much guaranteed in that large. But guaranteed's a, a tough word to use. <laughs> All right, great stuff, Mike. Uh, we'll let you get back to work, uh, go back to film room, whatever, get your nap, your massage. There we go. Get all that get the stuff. workout in. That's a good idea. Got it in already. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give you some karma for yeah, the I'll take game it. And, yeah. uh, and for the weekend. We'll take it. Thank anticipate you. great crowds. It's, it's going to be a fun time in Will Park. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Mike Littlewood, BYU baseball coach on BYU Sports Nation.